All right, we're gonna go for an hour and no more. So I gotta be home by six. Okay, I will. This is that gets my goat. There, I said it. Happy now. Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. Welcome to the, could we call this part three of the Christmas extravaganza? If you want to, but. Oh, I want to so bad. Okay. I really, really want to. Okay. Oh, it's gonna be great. Okay, now you can't. Oh, damn it. So I'm big, I don't know if I said this before I went off on a tangent number one of the day, but I'm Big Anglovich, and here by my right side is... Rich Outfield. Yes. And this is our That Gets My Goat holiday whatever is smaller than an spectacular. Uh, just an extravaganza. This one's just an extravaganza. A spectacular is a much bigger deal, I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Spectacular is lesser than an extravaganza. This, this is, is just our a holiday shindig. acknowledgement. <laughs> so, this is another kind of a uh, listener participation event kind of a thing. But Rich Outfield, without consulting me, asked people if they liked Christmas songs and wanted to hear what they had to say about Christmas songs. And... Everybody responded on Facebook. Except and, Big Anglovich. Yeah, because well, he's I a was... big softie, despite having talked to my ear off countless times about when he had to do the graveyard shift <laughs> at a grocery store, and he'd do the night shift right before Christmas, and it was the same, like, 11 Christmas songs over and over again. But they couldn't just be Christmas songs. They had to be non-offensive, non-denominational, non-religious Christmas songs. And so... He said that those, like, 11 songs were on his do not call list <laughs> every year for Christmas because he, he grew to hate them. And for me, it's almost all Christmas songs. <laughs> but Well, interestingly, it's also that for our listeners. <laughs> the, you know what the really the weird thing is about all of that? Is now that it's been so many years, because this was 1999 or, or so, maybe 2000, no, it's 99, exactly. When uh, I had to go through this, all these years later, I, I hear those songs and it brings back like positive memories. It makes me nostalgic. I hear the song and I'm like, oh, not this Christmas. That is the worst. And now I hear it and I'm like, oh yeah. Ba -da 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 this Christmas. It's weird. And I found that to be the case with, like, most 80s songs, too. Like, I don't know if you're the, the same as me, but songs from the 80s, like, when the 80s were happening, so many of them were like, oh, this song, it sucks. Why do they play this so much? And now I hear that song, and I'm like, oh, yeah, solid. solid. As a rock. That's yeah. what this love is. Yeah, and, and why would I look back positively at a song like that? And yet I do, and I sing along to it. All these songs that just are crap, but you put enough time. I mean, I remember like, oh, I didn't like Prince, didn't like Madonna, you know, all the songs that everybody, you know, you had to love because those were the, the you didn't like Bruce Springsteen. I don't know, I might even like look back at Bruce Springsteen songs and be like, oh yeah. Although we're going to be discussing a Bruce Springsteen song today. <laughs> mm. Well, just for me, it's the obligatoriness of these songs. Like... There's some kind of unwritten, or maybe it's even written down somewhere, rule that you have to play these sang songs again and again, or you're somehow not in the spirit, or you're somehow <laughs> not properly observing the holiday, and that. And I mean, I could go on and on about the reasons I hate it, but one of the big ones is is just like with the decorations and the sales and the toys and all that stuff. It starts earlier every <laughs> year, and there was the station that I would make fun of. I think we made fun of it in the spirit of Christmas. Casey? That, that I believe they do the 30 days of Christmas or whatever. You know, it's starting a month before Christmas. They shift their format to only Christmas songs all day and all night. And this that year... That was what they did when you were a child. This year, I think they started like November <laughs> 2nd or some crazy thing like that. And it's one of those preset stations on my radio because I'm old and I was like, well, I like to hear songs about love, so I'm going to turn it to 100.3. But 
But now it's just like, oh gosh, if yeah. there's some way to permanently skip, to program into my radio to, that I never even stop there when I'm scanning stations. <laughs> what I've noticed is, yeah, it was going, it got back to the point where you said November 2nd. There was a few years ago where they started October 31st. Mm. Not November 1st. For some reason, they thought, yeah, Halloween's the day we'll start playing Christmas songs. That makes perfect sense. Let's do it. And weird, I don't know I don't know when they started this year, but I was listening to a radio station, which wasn't that radio station, but it was like an AM station or something like that. And apparently the guys that were on the show were like guests with the Christmas music station. And uh, they were there to help them turn, flip the switch over to the Christmas playlist or whatever. And they said that they had talked them, you know, they're like, yeah, we've, we finally managed to talk them out of starting earlier and earlier. And so, you know, they waited until today. And I don't remember what day it was, but it was like the 15th or something. It was like actually, you know, progress <laughs> instead of like, oh, yeah, they started on the 1st instead of the 31st. You know, it was it was at least a week or two from there. And I was pretty impressed by that, you know, was, that they would make that decision. The other pro see this is the problem that I have with that station is they're not the Christmas music station they're the Christmas commercial station they play about a half of a song in between commercial breaks so you you're like oh I'll listen to some Christmas music oh it's a commercial and then you turn to oh good it's on a song and then as soon as the song's over it goes right to a commercial and their commercial breaks are like ten minutes long and then they play a song and then they go to another ten minute long commercial break. But uh, I am, I guess, a softy because, yeah, I, I like Christmas music. I don't have a real problem with the concept of Christmas music or uh, most of the songs I tend to like. There's a version, we'll, we'll put it this way, there's a version of pretty much every song out there that I like. I don't like every version. Like, the stuff that they play on that station you're talking about is all absolute garbage. I cannot stand any of it. Um, for example, the first que the first person who responded to our comment... And your, your question was, do you have a Christmas song you long to never hear again? Comment, and maybe I can convince Big to talk about it on the show. You know, for the holidays. For kids. So the first response is that Mariah Carey one. <laughs> and, you know, that's Angie Bellinger Richardson who says that. And oh man, do I agree 100% <laughs> with her. Anything by Mariah Carey really is, is, is awful. Um, and this, the All I Want for Christmas is You is not her worst song by a long shot. But it doesn't matter. It's still Mariah Carey. I've heard it done by other people, and, I, you know, I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't hate the song itself, but ooh, do I hate Mariah Carey. I, too, hate Mariah Carey. And it just, oh, the show-offiness of her voice. She yeah. doesn't sound like a human being. She sounds like some kind of fembot that's programmed to go up above and beyond the normal range of human singing. And there's, like, no humanity to it at all i hate it <laughs> but but so having said that uh, i've really grown to love uh, all i want for christmas is you <laughs> really Even the fudge and mariah carey song we went to uh, a family get together christmas thing the other day and i took the kids to it and there was a christmas train that you could ride and there was a christmas boat ride you could take and in line for the christmas boat ride i heard all I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. And then I heard It's Cold Outside. I really must go. That one. And We'll talk about that. And I that mentioned that while we were getting <laughs> finally getting into the boat. And I said, you know, I think uh, this song was playing when we got in line. And she says, yeah, the loop is only six songs. <laughs> and so by the time we got off the boat, that song and Merry Christmas, or sorry, All I Want for Christmas is You played again. And I thought... Oh, what a hellish job. There's only six songs in the loop. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, you thought it was bad working at the grocery store in the middle. Or I should say I thought it was bad working because you didn't do that. That was me. But yeah, it was much more than a six-song loop. 
You see, that's one of the things that's kind of a bummer about Christmas songs is most artists want to, they don't want to be considered uh, religious singers. You know what I mean? They don't want to be like, oh, it's Tennessee Ernie Ford or something. You know, even back... Are you a hundred years old? Wait, what? <laughs> even back uh, when... Even mentioning Amy Grant would have dated you, but Tennessee Ernie <laughs> Ford? Even back when Bing Crosby, you know, who is Mr. Christmas Song, you know, that's like his sh mo number one legacy. You know, when they first came to Bing Crosby and said, hey, we, we want you to record some Christmas music, he's like, what? No, I... I'm a pop singer. I can't. I can't sing Christmas. I'm not a religious singer. Eventually, obviously, they convinced him to go for it, anyways, and he became Mr. Christmas. But you know, everybody tries to avoid any song that's mildly religious, which you know I can understand that, I guess, because you know you're, that's not your thing. Or if you're the Andrews Sisters, you're Jewish, and so you don't sing anything except for the ones that are uh, Santa Claus related. Um, but. Uh, Unfortunately, it seriously limits people's song choices. And so you go each year, you know, 30 or 40 artists put out a new Christmas album. And it's all the it, same It's songs. the exact same songs on every single album. Unless you're Sting, you know, you're just going to use the exact same songs so that everybody has a version of Sleigh Ride. Everybody has a version of Baby It's Cold Outside. Everybody has a version of Jingle Bells. Everybody has a version of All I Want for Christmas is You. Now the one that they've added, and what, that is cool. I love that they've actually added something. But yeah, now the new thing is Last Christmas. Everybody's doing their version of that song. That's true. You, It used to just be Wham. And now there's like 15 different <laughs> yeah, versions of it. Yeah, uh, that's the thing that I hate about Christmas is... I, and I've done this more than once where I've taken my list of Christmas songs and like gone and listened to them and been like, okay... I'm going to pick my favorite version of each one of these songs and just get rid of the rest because I don't want to just keep hearing the same song over and over again. You know, I get my all my songs and I just tell it to shuffle and I keep hearing the same song every, you know, three or four songs. There's another Sleigh Ride and Sleigh Ride is the worst. Everybody does that song. Every single person. And... You know, it's a it, well. It was a good song, but at this point, <laughs> I don't know how much how much more I can stand it. It's funny because you're starting to become Mr. Negativity. All it took <laughs> was one. I like that song. You know, it's Mariah Carey and she's the Antichrist. <laughs> but I like that song. You talked about Mariah Carey being a fembot. When when all I want for Christmas is you came out. Did she look like a fembot already by then? I or think probably. Did that yeah. happen later? Because she does not look like a, a real person anymore. It's just like. The enormous jugs and like the uh, all the, I don't know. And Tom Tancredi says as a comment reply to that, I love Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas" and I loathe it. Oh, I'm not how, sure. how do you love and loathe? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how that how that works. But our next comment is from Clay Duggar who says. Annie by Josh Groban. Oh, you know, about five years ago, I wrote a sketch for us to do on the show. It was going to be a whole episode, and it was somewhat so Josh Groban related where because it was. Man says, I sure love that Josh. Groban. And we got announcer man to do some anti Josh Groban stuff for that episode, and then we never ran it, mostly because you know it. There's a hundred different things that I start to do for the show and then don't end up happening because it's work. Um, but yeah, I always think about that because he's almost gone away. But five years ago, it's just like, oh crap, that song yeah. again by Josh Groban? <laughs> Dude, this is a real radio station. What are you guys oh, playing this on? Holy night. And I even recorded <laughs> a version. I went onto YouTube and got a karaoke version of a Josh Groban song. And I sang it, but made it about chalupas. <laughs> and I recorded that and I still have the recording that was supposed to play, you know, at, as an outtake at the end of the episode and yeah that makes me regret us not doing it but yes like I, your loot song Duggar you're correct <laughs> like <a chalupa>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you there Clay Duggar yes me too I, I once got a Josh Groban album for my wife because she liked Josh Groban and, uh, uh. and 
luckily it wasn't the Christmas song uh, album, so it doesn't keep coming back year <laughs> after year to haunt me. It's but, like Jason Voorhees. It's like, yeah. shoot, is it Friday the 13th again? <laughs> oh, crap. Exactly. That's what Josh Groban is like, man. I'm not down with his thing. Uh, Jonathan Hickel says, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Okay, I gotta agree with you there, although I never hear that song. Thank Buddha, dude. Yeah. Because I've heard that song probably twice or thrice in my whole life. It's... And uh, I don't know which version it is, but the one that I've heard is like some woman doing like a sing-songy little kid. I'm yeah, a romper room kindergarten trying teacher. Trying to sound like a child. Voice. And he's like, da, 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 fuck, 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 fuck you. And I just like, oh my gosh, this is worse than Josh Groban. Yeah. Because it's... of the opposite. I mean, Josh Groban is just, Nyah! you know, it's like, oh, come on, dude. Nobody sings like that. This person is not even, they're not even trying. Yeah. They're... It's just like, I'm going to do a voice. It's really annoying. And Ooh, I'm going to sell a hundred albums. And you're like, yeah. And that's a hundred too many. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, that is a song they don't play much. But it's almost like the only version of that song, though, weirdly. Like, somebody, Hanson, should have done a version of it <laughs> instead of the song that they did do. <laughs> Hanson is one of those where, in, and I know it's 90s, not 80s. But in the 90s, I was just like, oh, this is oh, Somebody recorded diarrhea, and now it's on the radio. <laughs> and enough time has passed that when I hear Mbop, I'm going, oh, oh, oh. We'll leave that. You start there's, singing along. There's something like joyously innocent about that it. song to me now. Uh, uh, sorry, and that is an uh, that is a sidetrack. You said you made an interesting observation about I want a hippopotamus <clears throat> for Christmas the other day. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why this happened, but uh, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Somehow wires got crossed in my head, and I couldn't sing the next line to it. I would go, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And I, I guess it's the second line too. Only hippopotamus will do. And then the wire crosses and I go, I, I love, love to hear you moralize when I'm between your thighs. You blow me away. Sit on my face and tell me that you love me. And I posted about that on Facebook and people were like, I don't get it. And then so I typed it all out for them. And they're like, oh, okay. I see it now. But yeah, I mean, they're not quite the same but they they're similar enough that somehow <laughs> really similar Come somehow on. the wires crossed in my head and that's how I keep seeing it every time that I uh, think of it now so that's this trouble Dave Wallace mentions a song here called Mary did you know Ooh. do you know this song because this doesn't sound familiar I'm I uh, that that is weird I I don't know did you know that song Ed I uh, know I don't know that song. What? Mary, did you know? We'll ask Doc if uh, Doc, do you do you know that one? Huh? Well, apparently he <laughs> oh he, he tooted it. toots tootleman over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that song. Um, that's um, got to be a supremely religious one. Oh uh, yeah, it's obviously. Like, Mary, did you know when yeah, maybe that was growing in your belly? Maybe it's that one of those. He would one day be upon the cross. Now. I apologize because that's probably <laughs> severely offensive to people out there. But all country music, <laughs> when they feel offensive. like they need to throw in a line about America and or a line about God or Jesus, has that effect on me as, as my little twangy uh, sacrilegious song just did to you. Yeah. It's... So now we're all one because we've been offended <laughs> equally. It feels a little cheap every time they do that. Yeah, I don't know. That, that, I didn't mention this before because we moved on, but the, there's actually two stations that play Christmas music, I've discovered. Well, you're listening to AM. There's and probably all of them on there. I, I started flipping back and forth from one to the other because, you know, the one is the commercial station and not the Christmas station. So when they go to commercial, I'll jump up. And it's only like, it, it, one's like 100.3 and the other one's like 101.5 or something like that. So I'll just dash up the dial <laughs> because 100.3 is always on commercial yeah and the weird thing is or the sad thing is uh that's uh, i think it's the country station normally because they'll play like bean crosby and stuff like that and then all of a sudden it's like santa looked a lot like daddy daddy <laughs> looks a lot like him and I'm just like, whoa. Santa took my mom right over the pool table. And you're like, what? I'm just like, I, I, I haven't heard that song 
<laughs> no, what? What is this? You will have to send me the link to that because I song. would much rather listen to the country <laughs> version. Honestly, I mean, even though I just talked about how crass the country songs can be, at least I haven't heard Trisha Yearwood's version of Winter Wonderland four hundred times. You know what I mean? Yeah, there you it's go. like these are ones that they don't get played on the mainstream station, and so maybe I'd be like, oh. Oh, is somebody else doing Little Drummer Boy instead of Neil Diamond? Okay. Oh, you know? oh maybe that'll come up later, too. Because <laughs> I do see it down the... Oh, as a matter of fact, Charles Knudsen, I'm guessing. I'm sure you don't... Say the Knudsen! <laughs> I'm assuming the K is silent. K-N usually means silent K. Hey, Charles, let's put the nude back in Knudsen, all right? Knudsen. He says Little Drummer Boy. And Marsha Latham replies, I loathe the little drummer boy. Where did that even come from? Peace on her. Not only is the it song be. itself annoying, but it's not based on anything. Just except like for the, the people who wrote the song. It's written by Biggie. And I couldn't, of course, let that go because, like, seriously, you're going to complain that a Christmas song is based on nothing? <laughs> Oh, yes, and, and the, the Rudolph the Reindeer, Red-Nosed Reindeer story is based on the truth. <laughs> that was based on pure scripture. I mean, what 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 are you going for here, Marshall? Yeah. <laughs> and Marshall said, of course Rudolph is real. Both stories were also adapted by Rankin Bass in the 80s. I still like and watch the Rudolph special, but even as a kid, I could not tolerate the little drummer boy. Let's get some of that uh, emperor music. Anger. Me. I mean, I appreciate the effort to make a religious Christmas special, but that song. <laughs> he puts pum pum pum, shut up. At the end. Pum pum, shut up. Uh, you know, that pum 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 part is the thing that. Kills, kills every drum, little drummer be. boy version. Every time I hear someone do that, I go, oh no. And yeah, you, Neil Diamond or somebody going, can I play for you? Pum, 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 pum. Or somebody like tries to come up with some way to make it not suck. Me and my so drum. They'll do it different and be like, pum, 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 you know, or they'll oh, change really? it around or. I've I've heard a few where I don't hate. Those would all be like the the one. There's one version I have that's just from a CD that I got a long time ago. That's just called Big Band Christmas, and it was done in a in the style of Sing 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 by uh, Benny Goodman, I believe that was. But you know that's the that's the song where it's got the drums and you know. So it's a well-known song as far as swing goes, but yeah, they took it and kind of did it as uh, as Little Drummer Boy, so they did the same thing, but they go, and then they go, and it's at least tolerable. All right, I'll take your word for it on that one. <laughs> You, of course, rolled your eyes when I said Trisha Yearwood doing Winter Wonderland. <laughs> but I'd rather hear that. I'm sorry. Oh, Winter Wonderland is the one that I can... Is that on this list? Because I wanted to address Winter Wonderland. Uh, I'm sure it is. Pretty much every single song is on this list. So this one is a no-brainer. Mark Sh... What? Shifley. Mark Shifley says uh, the Christmas shoes. Yeah, in Britain they'd probably say Shifley, whereas here, you know... <clears throat> Well, yeah, if he didn't say it, I would have said it. Thank you, Mark. We've talked about that before on the Dune Seaf. If you're a long-time listener, just listen to that episode again, because nothing <laughs> has changed. But on the positive side, on the count your blessings side, I really only hear that song maybe once every Christmas yeah. season. You'll be, like, walking through the mall and everything is <laughs> fine, and then suddenly, like, a goose walks over your grave, and you're like, holy crap, what has happened? Oh... The Christmas shoes is playing. It's like, Daddy crippled this boy's mama just so I could learn my lesson. And I'm like, oh, geez. Did I say daddy? I guess daddy could have crippled this boy's mama too, but that's not uh, the actual meaning of the song. <laughs> oh, gosh, Christmas shoes sucks. Yeah. And it was so popular just a decade ago, 15 years ago or whatever, that Hallmark Hall of Fame made a... And maybe it wasn't Hall of Fame. They have standards. I think, no, I think it was. I uh, See, 
I would have guessed that it was a song made specifically for the Hallmark Hall of Fame movie, and that's where it came from, but it could just no, have easily been it's one of those the... super crass country songs appealing to the lowest common denominator, guys. <laughs> okay, now, keeping on the uh, same theme, the next uh, person, Aaron Vleck, says, I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus. Now, you have ranted, maybe not on the show, but maybe yes on the show, I'm not sure, but you have ranted about how much you hate this song. I don't think so. Yes, you have. Don't lie. You hate the, just the, the cheesy, I want to say innocence or something like that. of The, <laughs> the naivete oh, of what, uh, what, how daddy would have laughed had he seen yeah. mommy spread eagle with this strange <laughs> man. <laughs> Isn't that the end of the song? <laughs> yes, I remember. Yeah, I, th- I think that spread is spread eagle. It might yeah. have been spread eagled there, but <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the song personally. Why? But, um, I just think it's kind of cute. Mommy kissing Santa Claus, and the kid doesn't realize that they're the same person because Mommy Santa ch- looked a lot like Daddy. Daddy looked a lot like him. He never ever used a condom. But you didn't know where he had been. All right. Okay, Jennifer Gifford says Felix Navidad. Now, I don't know that song, but Feliz Navidad. That's probably just a typo. <laughs> no, no, it's, he's like, it's, she's like saying Josh Groban. There's a guy named Felix Navidad. Oh, gosh, yeah. Who comes out every Christmas every to year do a he's bunch got of more standards. Songs. <laughs> she just hates the, the voice of the uh, singer who is, who is it? Is it Jose Feliciano? Is that? Oh, I don't know who does. Feliz Navidad. You can't yeah, go wrong just, with Jose you don't hear like a bunch of covers of that very often. It's almost always that, or yeah, that, it's same, that same version song every time, except for Dora the Explorer did do oh, a cover geez, of really. it. Really, it's <laughs> weird that you don't hear that on didn't, real radio stations. <laughs> didn't I tell you about that one where uh, my daughter, way back in the day, had watched just all this uh, Dora the Explorer, you know, and then we went to this Christmas party and. They were just singing random songs, and they decided to sing Feliz Navidad. <laughs> my daughter goes, oh, I know this one. Alice Magiva. And I just thought, oh, that's great. Thank goodness for Dora to teach our kids Spanish. <laughs> She's doing such a great job of it. She'd always say, abinite. Yeah, abinite. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Abinite. <laughs> Your dad would punch me if I did that right now, okay? He's like, abinite. Stop saying it. It's really catching on. It's working out. Dora's gone away. Like, you don't hear anything about her. Nor Barney. Well, Barney's been gone for a long time. And I think people really, really hated Barney. Whereas Dora was a little bit shrill, a little bit irritating. But she didn't engender the kind of hate that that Barney Barney did. did. Because he was like... Whereas Dora was just like, say map. And then she'd just stand there and wait for you and wait for you and just, like, blink at you and stuff. And you're just like, ah, you're creeping me out. Stop looking at me. Say map, goddammit. <laughs> okay, map. Yeah. Do it, bastard, or something. She also really dislikes the disco sound of the uh, of the song. And it, it was from that time period. All right, next. Mia McDavid doesn't like Rudolph. Who doesn't like Rudolph. Except for all the reindeer, all the other, all of the other reindeer that used to laugh and call them names. Uh, that's based on uh, an actual scriptural account too, which is cool. She also adds the date rape song. Oh, I can't imagine what she could be referring to. <laughs> Next, <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with Rudolph, but it it has been played a lot of times. Although, yeah, there's probably a thousand different versions of that one too. And, yeah, the date There's rape not song like, oh, or Rudolph. Rudolph. There's not like one version that you always think of with Rudolph, as far as I know. That's a much more childy one that you probably don't hear on the yeah. adult contemporary. Yeah, not as much, station. but you still get it. They play the uh, weirdly. They play the like Roy Rogers version of that song a lot. That and Santa Claus is coming to town. Those two like Roy Rogers the singing cowboy is always on the air singing that not on the country station but on the regular one which is odd i think i wonder if it's the same where gino moretto comes from gino, hell no gino moretto says he can't stand snoopy's christmas 
Now, this is not what you think it is, though. Oh. He's not talking about Linus and Lucy, which is the name of the song that you want to despise. There's I don't a, want to. I have achieved actual despise. There's a song called Snoopy's Christmas. He says he worked in the department store over Christmas one year, and it was one of the songs. Well, let's looped. listen to it. Because I want to hear what Snoopy's Christmas is. Chances are I hate that too, though. Because he's... There's more than one Peanuts song that used to get played at work all the time. And I'd be like, oh, is this another Peanuts song? It's like, yes, this is the part where they stick their tongues out and get some snowflakes on them. And I was like, F you. Why are you talking that way? You know that you're 50 years old. <laughs> Well, yeah, I've heard Snoopy versus the Red Baron, but this isn't called Snoopy's Christmas, is it? Oh, this isn't it then? Well. Forty below? I want to know from Gino if that's what he's talking about or if he's talking about Linus and Lucy. Um, Which is the song that goes da na 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 They play on the it. piano. Da 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 Which that was that. one of the ones that pissed me off when I worked at the grocery store overnight because it's, it's not, not a Christmas, Christmas song. song. It's just a song from a TV show. It was on The Great Pumpkin. So apparently it's also a Halloween song. It um, was on, I'm one? sure it was on the Thanksgiving one, the oh, yeah. Easter Good one. Man, Charlie Brown. All of the Charlie Brown song, or specials included that song. Happy 9-11, Charlie Brown, <laughs> the, these, these specials. So, but yeah, Gino, if that's the song, the Snoopy versus the Red Baron, gosh, I hate to say this. I hate to, because you know me. I love to just loathe things. I don't mind that song at all, that Snoopy versus the Red Baron song. <laughs> In fact, I almost smiled. I couldn't quite manage because, you know, the hate is flowing through me. Oh. But, but I, I almost smiled when I heard it because I was like, oh, yeah, I, I remember this song. I don't remember that song at all. I, I, When I saw Gino's complaint about it, I went, what is this? I've got to look it up. And when I played it, I was like, I've never heard this song. And I'm sure I have because obviously it was on the, the Christmas special and I've seen it. Well, I wonder if but. we should have looked up Mary Did You Know. <laughs> Maybe that one's best left to the imagination. Maybe we should just look it up and make Dave Wallace listen to it for a while. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a way to punish the people that participated in this episode. Play a little clip of each one. Yeah. Gino had a similar experience to me. He says he worked in a department store over Christmas one year, and it was one of the songs uh, on the looped music mix. And you would hear it over and over and over again. He's not a fan also of Feliz Navidad, which I assume was probably also on the loop. You know what song was on the loop? There were several songs that were on the loop, like This Christmas, which is one I was just like, I've never heard this This Christmas song. But now you've heard it 40 but, yeah, times. After a month, I was like, I never want to hear this This Christmas song again. Another one of those was The Waitresses. Oh, gosh, I hate The Waitresses. Christmas Wrapping. Oh, and... Here's here's a uh, summation of all of the waitresses' songs. All of their songs do that. All of them. Yeah. The funny thing is, again, oh, 16 don't years like later, I'm like, you know what? Don't. I need to get myself a copy of oh, that song. Oh, that song eats giant shovelfuls of manure. <laughs> I like Rudolph. it now, weirdly. Oh. Um, Rudolph dung in just clumps. Marshall says he used that uh, Snoopy's Christmas as the music bed in his podcast for Christmas. Good thing that Gino doesn't listen to his show, I guess, then, huh? Or anyone else. <laughs> Gino says there's a New Zealand-themed version of the 12 Days of Christmas, which he finds really annoying, but you hardly ever hear it anymore. Even there, which is a mercy. Hmm. I've never heard it, it turns out. Uh, you know what I did hear, we though? We would was... just be baffled by that, though. Can you imagine? <laughs> We'd be like, I... Okay, I think I get that one, because there's a city called Wellington, right? And that must be a play on the... 
But the rest, no. Yeah. There was a podcast that I was listening to that was playing Christmas songs. And they were talking about how uh, for a majority of the world, really, Christmas comes in the summertime. And all this crap that we sing about, you know, going for rides on open sleighs and letting oh, it snow. Majority and, of the world. And all that in the stuff. land of white men, Christmas <laughs> comes in winter. <laughs> well, you were coughing through that, so we'll have to cut it. But Apparently there's a song, and I, I want to say it was from Australia, or maybe, I, th- I think it may have even been from New Zealand, where, they, yeah, they just did a whole bunch of songs and they switched them around so it was... I, I want to say it was walking in a summer wonderland is what they sang in this, and they, you know, changed everything up so that it wasn't all about sleigh bells ringing and building a snowman and all that kind of crap. Instead of a Christmas tree, it was Vegemite. Yeah, these things happen. <laughs> okay, what did you guess on how to say his name? Teclitz or Tech? I'm just going to say Teclitz. Teclitz, yes. <clears throat> those little Spanish gums. Yeah. I, I like those. Keith Teclitz says he enjoys Bob and Doug McKinsey's version of the 12 Days of Christmas. And a beer. The first time he heard it, but after that, now it just annoys him. Ah, okay. <laughs> the, the song that you sent to me was the 12 Pains of Christmas. Do you not like that? Bob Rivers' 12 Pains of Christmas? <laughs> I like uh, the, the part where he goes... Rigging up the lights, that guy. The, yeah, that guy that, is probably the When best. one goes out, they all go out. Now why the hell are they blinking? I love that yeah. guy. He keeps changing his, you know, some of them change things up, but as it goes on, they, you know what they're talking about? Because they've said their thing once and then they just start, you know, living through it. The facing my in-laws lady <laughs> has some pretty good ones too. And the kid who's just like, buy me something! Oh... <laughs> uh, I want a transformer. <laughs> She's a witch. I hate her. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's one of those songs, though. Like, the 12 Days of Christmas can be one of the worst songs possible. And everybody has their 12 Days of whatever. You know, there's so many parodies of that song. I have a, f- a fun version where this guy actually really worked hard. And it's available. On, I, you know, I, I want to say I found it. And what was that? We used to get... All our music for the show was at jamendo.com. Yeah, I think I Jimendo. found this guy's Christmas music on jamendo.com, and he did a version of 12 Days of Christmas, which was actually really good, and he changed the things up. He did them in all different ways and stuff like that. There's at one point where he's like, okay, everybody take a big breath, and then he just does it as fast as humanly possible. Like, and he just goes through it that fast. Anyways, it was a really good one. But for the most part, I'm sorry. You don't like 12, 12 Days of, of Christmas. Christmas 12 Pains of Christmas I have fond memories of. Okay. Good. Like the waitresses. Um, oh, come on. Please don't lump those together. But in a, one is a novelty song and <laughs> one is just a cruel and unusual punishment song. <laughs> but the 12 Pains of Christmas I have uh, more deep-seated fond memories of it because I heard it in my childhood in the 80s. So let's see... Next up comes Marshall Latham with another uh, contribution. For such a jolly man, he he has room in his stu- in <laughs> inside him for a lot of hate. Yes, I like that about Marshall. <laughs> yeah, his profile picture is him dressed as Santa too, and he's here just railing against Christmas music. <laughs> but he's also drop kicking a brat in the Santa oh, costume, okay. which you don't get a lot of. His contribution this time is "Last Christmas by Wham." That's so oh. annoying. Gino Moretto concurs. Keith Tecklitz says Marshall Latham wins. I love Last Christmas. But, yeah, now you don't always hear the Wham version. You yeah, you, the other you like the Taylor Swift version instead? I like all Taylor Swift versions, but no, I, I still prefer the Wham. You like the Taylor Swift song where she sings about the baby boy who saved... The birthday boy, that's what she sings. The birthday boy who saved our lives. <laughs> But yeah, okay, how about this one? I believe this was actually by Wings, but... Uh, oh, Paul here, McCartney? They're talking by McCartney. Christine Maya Flair says, McCartney's simply having a wonderful simply Christmas time. having a wonderful Christmas time. She says, boring, repetitive, and inane. We're in the car. Podcast is on. And... <laughs> making fun of Marshall. Unascertained. And your schlong. Says, Simply podcasting. Says also blatantly written to rake in Christmas royalties. 
And John JCG says easily the worst of the worst. <laughs> I don't hate that song. I don't hate it either. A... But it is inane. The 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 da 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 da. It's just, there's something just like super oh, that's shrill or biting or. The choir of children sing their song. They practiced all year long. Schlong. That was another one of those songs that was on the repetitive loop at the grocery store. And yeah, I did not like that. It, I still probably don't very much. It's not one that I've gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that song. That was, I think I need a copy of that. I wonder how many people have done their own version of it. None. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, Charles Knutson is the John Denver song. Darn it, I don't want to click on the link because... What is the song called? The John? It's Please Daddy Don't Get Drunk on Christmas or what is, is that? Is that what it's called? What is it? Please, the data on it. Please Daddy Put That Broken Bottle Down. <laughs> please Daddy Don't Beat Mommy This Christmas. Yeah, Please Daddy Don't Get Drunk This Christmas. Oh, I kind of wanted you to play it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Start over. Charles Newton says, uh, of course there's this uplifting classic, which is the John Denver Please Daddy Don't Get Drunk This Christmas. That's a like a country staple, I think. That's one of those like every country singer has to do their version. Like Dolly Parton has one, and like Kenny Rogers and Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood, Justin Bieber, yeah, all those country icons. Okay, here's a winner for Rich Outfield. Travis Wade hates Santa Baby. Oh, I hate Santa Baby, Travis. <laughs> Maybe you and I could be friends. New. And Big has always defended Santa Baby. It's just like, hey, it's harmless, and it's sort of a it called back to an earlier time, a better time, a purer time. I like When there were Santa gold Baby. diggers and it was okay. And, and I ain't saying she's a gold digger. But she, <laughs> yeah, she messing ain't with messing no with broke, no... Broke, broke, broke. Yeah, no, I, I don't know what it is, but I love that song. And I know you're going to even hate it worse when I say that, that my like favorite the version cover. is the Madonna uh -huh. version. I hate the original version, though. It sounds like they've freaking pumped the girl up with quaaludes and then said okay uh sing the song now that you're uh totally high and yeah it's just like santa baby and if there's nothing to it madonna when madonna sings it she totally sounds like she's betty boop um not that i love betty boop or anything but it, I, just, I just like the idea of it it's uh i'm sure people will hate me for it just like you hate me for it but i don't care yeah i think it's the betty boop Ness of that song that makes me hate it so much. Really? And I never heard the original. It was always the Madonna. Yeah, that was the that only version hear. that I knew. I didn't hear the original until way and later, and I was horrified. Somebody doing it that didn't do the little curly voice. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you know, uh, I still don't like it, but I don't hate it as much. The weirdest one was the Everclear version. <laughs> Ooh, I liked like, Everclear. Wait a minute, Everclear? I don't know if you guys understand what this song is about. <laughs> Anyways, okay, Jeff Carls says definitely the date rape song. Gosh, I, I, I don't know what he could be referring to there. <laughs> oh, okay, you mean the Sublime song. I didn't know that was a Christmas song. <laughs> Poor Sublime. That guy's dead. That guy was dead before we even knew who he was. I know, that's weird, huh? Talking about it being, you know, cold outside and what's in this drink. You know, I don't... Well, whatever. Okay. In case you didn't know why it was bad, Travis Wade says, Baby, it's cold outside is a rape song. Santa <laughs> Baby degrades women in too many ways to list. <laughs> okay. We've talked about it's cold outside before. It was one of the songs that I heard multiple times this week. <laughs> and really, I think my only problem with the song was my introduction to it was in Elf. Um, and if I had had like some pretty girl that says, have you never heard this song? Oh, it's, can't sing it with me. I would feel totally different w about it because there is something. I mean, it's a complex song. It's not just one. It's simply having it's there's something going on. I mean, it would be hard it's to not learn. just a date rape song. You're saying that's why it's complex. Is the, <laughs> the date rapacity of it. But I, I think. Part of the reason I don't like it is I just, yeah, I don't know it and I don't have any good memories associated with it. 
and you know the, the big memory is Elf. Yeah, I've heard a few weird versions of it. There was a version in this movie that my wife owned when we got married called. I want to say it might be called All I Want for Christmas. Liam Neeson was Santa Claus and, and Thora, Thora Birch, Birch was, was a child. And Thora Birch does Baby It's Cold Outside with her grandma, basically. Oh, okay. It's so not with an old man dressed At least set. not an old man. But yeah, she, her grandma is now trying to get her in bed somehow. I don't know what that's all about. but And then there's another version, too, that I have where... Uh, Brian Setzer does it with Anne Margaret, who is like 50 years. No, she's probably not that much older than him, but she's much older than him, like 30 years older than than him, which... And that? she's trying to seduce him, or he's trying to seduce Well, him? it's always the guy trying to seduce the girl. Oh, okay. But, yeah, it was just another uh, take on it. Another person, unascertained, hates Santa Baby. She thinks it's just so creepy. And then Chris Monroe... Manzi. Has this comment. I mean, like, all of them? Christmas music is terrible. If it were any good, it would be regular music. <laughs> fairy Tale of New York by the Pose. Oh, I love Fairy Tale. Notwithstanding, <laughs> obviously, that song's delightful. <laughs> if I had to pick the very worst one, I'd go with Wonderful Christmas Time by the Wings for what I feel are obvious reasons. And that's our last comment. What do you think? About We've already kind of, in our intro, touched on that. But I don't hate Christmas music. Maybe it's because you only listen to it once a month. I or, wish. Sorry. Maybe it's because you only listen to it once a year. Maybe it's just because Christmas is a nice time. And so you remember it fondly. And it comes along with good memories of being with your family and getting the Transformer for Christmas and all that kind of stuff. Eating all sorts of sweets and so forth. I don't know. That's all I got to say. Really? That's it? That's all you got to say? I don't know. Right before we started recording, the Beach Boys' Merry Christmas Baby, I think is the one it's called, was playing. And I used to like that song, but now every time I hear it, I hear the Beach Boys say, Christmas comes each time this year. And they chanted at the end of the song. It just makes me wish I were dead so, so much. Another one of those dumb lines. I guess I do have one more thing to complain about. Worst song ever is Bruce Springsteen's Santa Claus is Coming to Town. That guy was drunk off his ass when he played that song. Santa Claus is Coming to Town. He sounds so bad. Like, Rish sounds like 50 times better than Bruce Springsteen sang it, sounded in that song. I don't know what happened to it, but every time they play it each year, I'm just like, seriously, this guy is a guy that I think of as a musical legend? Because this is the worst song ever. Now that's all I got to say. Well, that's it, huh? Okay. Well, Mic dropped. I feel like we've <laughs> ended on a weak note. I um, you would because like I some... said it. I see what it is. Oh, I get it. Why don't you take us out strong? No, we were going to talk about <laughs> positives, and I guess that was your way of being positive. But then you bring up the spring scene song that you hate. <laughs> you had said that we, somebody was going to bring up Winter Wonderland, and nobody does. I don't hate Winter Wonderland at all. And I think it's because of the line, to face unafraid the plans that we've made. They've changed around English uh-huh. so that it rhymes. I always go, face unafraid the plans that we made. I don't know why, but I love that line, that part of that thing. It's like, go boldly where yeah. no man has gone before. Made these plans and they're going to go after it. But Winter Wonderland is about sex, right? All songs are about sex, aren't they? As well, as, as, <laughs> uh, there are so many good Christmas songs, and and maybe we should have done that. We'd ask people to put, well, what song do you like? But we can do that for next year's. Nobody wants to hear what you like; they just want to hear what you hate. And I can get so much more worked up about the songs <laughs> that I hate. And I've all the ones listed on that that people suggested. I think it, I'd still have to go with Christmas shoes as the worst <laughs> of the bunch. It's just Oh, that one is so soulless and just, it's just not, not cool. I, uh, it, I, I, agree. I mean, people always talk about It's Cold Outside in the nastiest possible interpretation of that song. But Christmas Shoes is way, way filthier than that. Way darker, <laughs> way bleaker. Filthier. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fan of that for sure. Although luckily I've only heard it... Very few times. So yeah, we've been fortunate. I can't I guess. hate it as much as I could if I heard it more. 
And yeah, this isn't our Thanksgiving episode, but you can be grateful yes. that we've only heard it a couple of times so in this time. So thankful that we haven't been submitted to worse. But yeah, there are a lot of good Christmas songs, and I, I, I was wanting you to make a list and me to make a list of the ones that we love. I think that would take a lot of thought and a lot of time. Uh, okay, so maybe we'll do it next year, but it just I'm thinking of songs that I wanted to talk about. First time I ever heard O Come All Ye Faithful, and I know this is going to sound like horse shit, but the first time I ever heard it, I was a little, little boy... And we were watching the Brady Bunch. <laughs> and what was the mom's name? Anyway, sure, Florence Henderson was supposed to sing Oh Come All Ye Faithful at some kind of Christmas party. And she got laryngitis and she couldn't sing. And uh, for some reason it was really moving to me at this that, that, she, that it was important to her to sing this song. And that she couldn't. And then, yes, the heavens open up. It's a Christmas miracle. And she's able to sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. And that made such an impression on me that, like, for the rest of my life, every time I hear, O Come All Ye Faithful, I think of Florence Henderson. And that's funny because she just died. And the last time I heard that on the radio, I was just like, oh, a friggin' Christmas song. And then I didn't change it. I listened to the rest of the song. Wait a minute. I remember that. And she died. Oh. You were brought to tears. Well, I know. It wasn't. I didn't go that far. There, there are tons of really good Christmas songs. I know that we focused on the negative, and I will continue to do so. <laughs> because, yeah, there are some that people didn't mention that, that suck just that much. Uh, but holy cow, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas? Is that a real song? <laughs> You know, that's a song that little kids should sing for their, like, little Christmas program. No. Not one that should ever have been made into a song that you can, like, hear on the radio. One that was such a big deal when I was a kid, and is all but forgotten now, is I'm Getting Nothing for Christmas. Mm -hmm. That was such a big deal. Oh, gosh. And, and I loved singing it, and the family would always want us to sing it, the kids to sing it, me to sing it. And I think, yeah, in just our age of entitlement... That song is is passe. That song is no longer in vogue. It's like, well, everybody's been nothing but bad this year. They're still getting all they want. And what are you talking about? <laughs> That's funny. Nobody gets you, punished anymore. You talked about that today before we were recording that your son got a letter from Santa. And it said, hey, guess who made the nice list this year? And it had your son's name on it. And he looked at your dad. And he looked at you, not your dad. He looked at his dad and was like, really? Look at this. I made the nice list, despite doing this, and this, and this, and nobody even knows about this. Yeah, I guess, I guess you did. <laughs> yeah, he's at the worst stage right now, where that's all he wants to do is be naughty. Whew, he's gotten into, like, every Christmas present. He's dug him out of the closet before he's supposed to. It's been a rough year for this guy. All right, well, we gotta go. <laughs> Time is short, and uh, I sympathize with the people that are making Christmas albums, because A, it's so easy and it's a, a guaranteed return on investment. So that's a two. And then three is why would you ever take any risk in recording a new song or digging up some old song when there's all these songs that everybody knows that you can just do your version of and hey, oh wow, guess how many we sold in November? Guess how many we sold in December? And it's going to come around next year and the year after that and the year after that for the rest of our lives but I wish more people would say, you know, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write a new Christmas song. And if it doesn't hit, that's, that's fine. But at least we're going to have a song here this Christmas that nobody else is singing. There's no other versions of that's ours that means something that's unique. That's not just a quick cash in. And I think that can be tied to when we go to the movies too, because that sort of stuff is rampant in the movies. But yeah, every once in a while, you'll hear a song that's a, like a new Christmas standard. And that, you know, then it gets covered by yeah. every new artist. Once they on start their covering album. it, then it becomes a Christmas standard. Well, I appreciate everybody listening with us. We'll put an explicit warning on here because <laughs> at some point I, I, believe, I believe I say the word douche. Whoa. We're All talking right. about oh. Eliza Douche Koo. Ah, I you see. Know. It was important to say it then. All right, folks, we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for listening and uh, have a Merry Christmas. Yes, have a happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Let's try and do the, the little drummer boy thing. Do you want to try and do I walking? can do Bing Crosby. 
to come. come they told they me. They told me. Pa-rumpa-pum-pum. Pa-rumpa-pum-pum. A, A newborn king, king to see. Pa-rumpa-pum-pum. Pa-rumpa-pum-pum. When does the peace on earth peace come Peace on earth. I don't know, dude. <laughs> This is a, uh, a doomed to failure experiment. Well, I wanted you to do somebody weird too. <laughs> to just be like, what? Like Casey Kasem and <laughs> and Adolf Hitler yeah. and Charlie Manson doing a song together? <laughs> if only I could do somebody weird, then it might work out. Good night. See you, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. And then there's another version, too, that I have where uh, Brian Setzer does it with Anne... Wilson? What? No, what's the woman... Lecky? <laughs> the woman who... Uh... Landers? Shit. The the one who was in Hathaway. all the, the beach blanket movies. Annette Funicello. No, it's not Annette Funicello, though. It's, it's Annette Funicello who was no, in it's... Beach Blanket Bingo, I promise okay, you. Okay, it's not that one, then. She was in, she was in like, beach movies, though, and I can't think oh, of Oh, you're thinking of Anne Margaret, aren't you? There we go, thank you. Uh, along those same lines, you know what, dude? What? Before we go along those same lines, I gotta piss like a freaking racehorse. Well, go right there. It's I not can't go night. right there. There's people... Christmas dildo was nice and hard, nice and hard. It's good to see the Christmas dildo was given out for every good girl like me.